you ever read those letters to Santa that are sometimes in the paper the, this time of year? You know, one, um, one little boy wrote and, and said, there, there are three little boys in, in our household. Said, uh, Jeff is two years old and, and he's, uh, he's good some of the time. And he said, David, he's five years old and he's good most of the time. And he said, uh, Nelson is seven years old, and he's good all the time. Now, can you imagine who signed the letter? <laughs> Another little boy by, by the, the name of, of Alfred was a, a little gutsy in his letter to Santa. He said, dear Santa, you didn't bring me anything good last year. You didn't bring me anything good the year before either, but I'm going to give you one more chance. <laughs> you know, despite the, the, the gutsiness of, of, of that letter, um, you know, it, it brings up a point worth considering. What do we do when we learn that we don't measure up? What do we do when we, we learn that we, we don't measure up? Is, is there hope for, for another opportunity? Or is it an issue that, uh, that we are just uh, doomed to be a failure the, the rest of our life? Well, in the, the story of a, a Christmas carol, the chains of gold that, that Scrooge had forged in, in life had done him no good. It was an issue that he was so concerned about what he was accumulating for himself that he didn't invest in others. He, he didn't invest in love. He didn't invest in, in relationships. You know, what happened was he became smaller rather than greater because of, of all of his wealth. His only hope was that it was not too late for him to make a change. It's good for us to, to remember that our future is not set in stone. You know, what, what is yet to be is not, uh, not set in stone. You know, we can make choices that change the ending to our story. We can, can uh, make choices that change the ending of, of our Christmas carol. You know, Scrooge says, I'm not the man that I was. You know, if I change my actions, can I also change the results? The, the good news in the, the story of the Christmas carol, as well as the good news that, that we find in the, in the pages of, of Scripture, is that it's never too late to change. It's never too late to, to, to make a change. It's a message of hope. You know, how do we find hope? How do we find hope that the, find the hope that Jesus brought into the world? Well, I believe that one of the first steps in, in finding hope that, that Jesus brought into to the world is by accepting the truth about life and about myself. You, you see, if, if I'm constantly living a lie, if I'm constantly being deceptive, then, then I'm probably not going to find the, the hope that Christ brings into to this world. You know, there's hardly a week that goes by that I don't have contact with someone whose sin has finally caught up with them or they continue to experience the consequences of, of sin in, in their life and choices that, that they've made. For a long time, they, they thought that they could lie and, and no one would find out. They thought they could cheat their employer and, and they would never get caught. Hope does not come when we are successful at not getting caught. But hope comes when we accept the truth about life and about ourselves. Scrooge's eyes were open to the fact that, that money was, was not what was going to, to buy him ultimate happiness. His eyes were open to, to the fact that, that he needed to be investing in people. You know, his money was not what brought the, the security for his future. He needed to invest in something that was, was more eternal. As followers of Christ, our hope must be based on, on reality, not on dreams and, and fantasies of, of our own making. Many, many people assume that, that Jesus only spoke to, to comfort the afflicted. 
But sometimes Jesus spoke to afflict the comfortable. You know, there's a story in, um, in Luke chapter 16. And it's the story of a, a rich man and, and Lazarus. You know, the, the rich man had, had worldly wealth. He had everything that, that the world could buy. You know, he lived a, a life of luxury. And at the gate of his mansion, there was a guy by the name of Lazarus. And Lazarus had, had sores. He, he was a beggar. Uh, Lazarus, Lazarus was, was a pitiful character. But, uh, but the rich man went in and out of his, his mansion day in and, and day out and, and paid no attention to, to Lazarus. Well, there came a day when, when Lazarus died, and, and the parable that, that Jesus tells says that uh, Lazarus went on to, to be in the, the bosom of Abraham to, to spend his eternity. It also said there, there came a day when the rich man died. And the, when the rich man died, it said that, that he went to hell. Now, in this, um, in this parable, in this story that, that Jesus tells, it, it says that uh, that they could look back and forth and, and see one another. And, and the rich man saw, saw Lazarus on, on the other side of a, of a great divide. And, and he called out to him and said, won't you come and give me some, some sort of comfort? Will you not give me just a, a sip of water? Will you not help me in, in some way? And um, Abraham refused the, the rich man's request. He said, all of your life you received good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Like Scrooge, the rich man is shown the consequences of his choices. But for the, the rich man in this parable, it was too late. The, the story of, of A Christmas Carol, the, the story of, of hope for us today is that it's never too late. It's never too late for us to, to make a change, and as we make a change, it can affect how the end of our story is written. There will come a day when we'll be held accountable for the actions in, in this life. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that we should live our lives in such a way that, that we are making investments in treasures in heaven. You know, what we do in this life is making an investment in our eternity. This brings us to a a second step of, of finding hope. And that second step is accepting the truth about God. As we think about today's scripture reading in, in Matthew chapter 2, uh, the story of the Magi, or, or some translations call them wise men, it's a story of hope that they are shown the, the ever-reaching love of God. In this passage, God uses heavenly signs to, to direct the wise men, to, to bring them to, to the Christ child, to, to bring them to, to Bethlehem. You know, these are, are men who were not Jews. These were men who were not looking for a Messiah, but yet God had spoken to them. God had given them a sign. God had nudged them to, to follow the star. They may or may not have known about the specific promises concerning the, the coming of, of the Messiah, but God spoke, them, spoke to them in a way that, that they could understand. And their hope stirred them to action. They began seeking after the star. They, they tried to, to find the, the sign, what was at the end of the sign that God had, had given to them. Their faith and their hope stands in contrast to the attitude of, of Herod. You see, the wise men and Herod portrayed two different responses to, to Jesus. The wise men want to write a good ending to their lives. But Herod writes a, a horrid one to him. Uh, the wise men bow down and, and worship the Christ child as they found him. You know, Herod was, was one who was trying to, to do away with the Christ child. And, and in, in trying to do that, he declared that any babies two years of age and younger should, should be killed. The wise men were searching for, for God's way, and Herod was trying to figure out how he could stay in control. The only way to break free from the humbug life and move to hallelujah is to, to capture God's vision for your life. You know, I, I think uh, Herod probably epitomizes the, the idea of, of humbug at that time, at that point, because 
Herod was trying to, to stay in control. He was trying to, to call all the shots, and he was not open to what God was doing. But the wise men, they were able to experience hallelujah because they were willing to, to respond to, to God's leading and prompting in, in their life. In John chapter 8, Jesus said that if we follow his teachings, it shows that we are really his disciples. Our memory verse for this week is found in, in John chapter 8, verse 32, the, the next verse that says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, one of the ways that we experience hope in our lives is to, to know God's truth and to put it in practice. And as we do so, it will set us free. It will turn our humbug into to hallelujah. When we know God's truth and accept that truth by putting it into practice in our lives, we'll experience freedom and we'll experience true hope. Herod rejected God's invitation to a new way of life. He rejected the, the news of the Messiah, seeing him as a threat to, to his own power. And so he sought to destroy him rather than to, to worship him. Herod's goal was to advance his own glory no matter what the, the price may, may be. You know, he re represents those who, who cling to, to everything in spite of, of what it is that God may want them to have. They cling on to, to their own ways, their, their own desires, rather than responding to, to God's truth. So what did Herod do? He ignored God. He brought the greatest possible pain on, on others. And in the end, he, he lost his own soul. The wise men responded much, much differently. Their vision was to respond to, to the work of the promise of God. Their vision was, was to, to respond to, to God's leading in, in their life. In doing so, they actually were used by God to, to save the Messiah. The wise men demonstrated a, another principle that can help us as, as we seek to, to recover hope. And that, that third principle in, in seeking to, to recover hope is not only learning the truth about ourselves, learning the truth about God, but thirdly, we must learn to pay attention to God. As we, as we learn God's truth, we must put it into practice in our lives. The, the wise men paid a, attention to, to God. They followed the Lord's leading in their lives. They took the, the risk of seeing what it was that, that God was going to do as they as they followed the, the star, but as, and as a result, they were able to experience unspeakable joy as they experienced the Christ child. Are you looking beyond the circumstances of, of this world and seeking what it is that, that God is doing in your midst? You know, it, it takes time to, to read God's Word, but as we read God's Word, do we do we seek to, to put that truth into to practice in our lives? You know, as we, as we hold on to, to God's truth, you know, it's an issue that we can, can put it into practice as, as we allow it to, to affect our hearts and, and minds. As followers of Christ, we're instructed not to, to look at the stars, but to, to look at God's word for for guidance in, in our life, for, for understanding in, in our life. We're to seek God's leading in our life, but we must act on his leading and do what he wants us to do. As we talk about paying attention to, to God, you know, Joseph had to pay attention to God as well. Uh, you see, as the, as the wise men came and, and they returned to their home a, a different way, you know, Herod realized that he had been, been tricked, realized that he had been had, and so he put out a decree that, that all the, the babies under two years of age should, should be put to death. And an angel spoke to, to Joseph and said that he should take uh, Mary and, and the baby and, and they should flee into Egypt for, for their safety. If Joseph had not been willing to respond to, to God's promptings at that point, if Joseph had not been willing to, to respond to, to God's leading at that point, then the, the life of Jesus would have been, would have been in jeopardy. The, the results could have been disastrous. You know, before I conclude this morning, I want to ask you a couple questions. 
Are you where you want to be in life? Are you where you want to be in life? Are you where God wants you to be in life? You know, Scrooge may have been where he wanted to be in, in life, but, but as he had these visitations in, in a dream, he realized that he wasn't where he should be. He wasn't where God wanted him to be in, in his life. The consequences of, of, of such life is that, that uh, if Scrooge had died without changing, he would have had nothing in the way of treasure stored up for himself in, in heaven. Herod may have been where he wanted to be, where he wanted to be in life, but he was not where God wanted him to be. Seeking our own way and leaving God's will behind in our life is not a, is not a good place to be. You know, it's not an issue that we should leave God out of the equation of where it is that we're headed day by day. You know, well, how do we, how do we come to, to that place of, of you know, accepting God's will or, or my will? You know, several years ago, I had a, a real struggle in, in my life in that I wanted to do one thing, but I sensed God was leading me to do something different. And I was, I was struggling with that because I didn't want to give up my dreams. I didn't want to give up my hopes. But in the midst of, of sensing God leading me in a, in a direction that was different than the one that I wanted to go, I finally came to the point of saying, okay, God, I'll choose your way in, instead of mine. And, and what happened at that point as I said yes to God was God changed my desires. God changed my desires as I gave myself to, to his direction. And, and his direction was what was ultimately going to take me to, to fulfillment, ultimately going to take me to the, to the place that, that God had created me uh, to go or who it was that he had created me to be. You know, we need to accept the truth about ourselves. We need to accept the, the truth about God. And we also then need to, to be willing to, uh, to, to follow God's leading in our life. You know, as we think about what does that mean to accept the, the truth about ourselves. Well, accepting our truth, the truth about ourselves means recognizing that, uh, that we're not perfect. You know, we've all sinned. We've all sinned and fallen short of, of the glory of God. And so if, if we've all sinned, then what that means is we each need to, to experience God's forgiveness. We can try and put up a good front. We can try and make others think that we've got it all together. But the reality is that for each of us, in understanding the truth about ourselves, is that, first of all, we need God's forgiveness. When we're in a place of humbug, we're probably not where God wants us to be. When we're in a place of humbug, maybe we need to ask ourselves the question of why. Why am I in this place of humbug? Maybe it's because I'm I need to repent. Maybe I need to, to ask for, for forgiveness. Maybe I'm in this place of humbug because I'm not doing what God wants me to do. Maybe I'm in this, this place of humbug because I need to, to change my attitude or, or my response to, to other people. You know, maybe it's an issue of, of confessing my, my needs and, and even my, my faults before God that helps me to move from that place of humbug to a place of, of hallelujah. God can help us in our humbug moments to move to a, a place of, of hallelujah. Secondly, as we, we accept the, the truth about ourselves, we also must learn about God's truth. The truth about God is that he loved the world so much that he sent his son. That's why we celebrate Christmas is because of the love that, that God had for the world in sending his son. You know, sending his son into the world in, in order that, that we could, could reconnect in our relationship with our heavenly father, a, a connection that was broken because of, of sin in our life. As we seek God's forgiveness and believe in his son, then we must pay attention to, to God. We must do what it is that he wants us to do. We must live as he wants us to live. In the story of the wise men, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 12, it, it says, they went home another way. Now, I know that that, that phrase in, in that story is, 
is talking about literally they traveled one way to, to get to Jesus, uh, the Christ child, and they traveled another way going back home. But uh, also it was an issue because they encountered Jesus on their journey. They did something different. They went home different than they had come in the first place. There are some of us this morning who need to go home a a different way. We need to go home changed within our hearts, changed within our attitudes. There are some who who want to, to make steps of change in order that your story might end differently. We need to go home a a different way than than we came with God's help. And the hope of the Christmas story is that things don't have to stay the way they are. The hope of the Christmas story is that that God offers us a change in life. We can change the, the way our story is written. We can change the ending. You know, as we repent of our sins... As we put our our faith in Christ and as we seek to follow him all of our days. As we learn his truth, we put put it into practice. And and the scripture tells tells us that as we put God's truth into practice, the truth will set us free. Let us pray. Lord, as we are in the midst of this Christmas season, as we are in the midst of of many pressures and and demands. Some of us just want to throw up our hands and, and, uh, and escape. But yet, Lord, you offer us a a change. You offer us the possibility of transformation of, of moving from humbug to, to hallelujah, moving from a point in which we're, we're only about what I want to being about what it is that, that you want. And so, Lord, I pray for each one in this day who, who is in need of that transition from, from humbug to hallelujah. May you be at work in our hearts. And may you help us to, to make a change. May you help us to go home in a different way in order that the ending of our story might be written differently. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.